Ten hut. All right, maggot. I don't know what type of manby panby Christian rock you've been listening to. Uh, actually, I find most Christian rock to be pretty lame and also theologically unsound. But around here, we do metal ween right. I'm gonna need a movie done. N let me finish. I'm gonna need a movie with a rock band. Got it. And a demon. Done. That, uh... Features Rockula's hot mom. Yes. And, uh, one of the chicks from Hard Ticket to Hawaii. Uh-huh. And I need it to be on a double bill with Hard Rock Zombies. Fuck, you're good. Other Matt. Yo. Give Christian Matt a promotion. You don't, uh, pay us. I know that. I meant give him a nice new title. Something like Senior Executive. I like that. What does a senior executive do? I don't know, whatever Christian Matt's doing. What do you do? Nothing. I make you do all the work. That's why I'm the superior Matt. Well, he's got me there. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a Matt. Sad little Matt. Matt then decided these movies to watch. Today's episode, Slaughterhouse Rock. Happy Metalween Rockers! Today we got a perfect addition to the Metalween canon. Slaughterhouse Rock. Slaughterhouse Rock, not to be confused with Slaughterhouse or Slaughterhouse Rules, is a film from 1988 directed by Dimitri Logothetis. It stars Nicholas Salozzi and Tom Riley, actors who mostly worked in low-budget sleaze. Salozzi even directed a Cynthia Rothrock movie? However, in supporting roles, you have Lethal Lady Hope Marie Carlton of Hard Ticket to Hawaii fame, and Tony Basil, known for the hit song Mickey, and more importantly, for playing Rockula's hot mom. Also, the music was done by Mark Mothersbaugh, one of the biggest composers in the industry, having done soundtracks for films like The Lego Movie and The Royal Tannenbaums. Of course, he was already famous as the frontman of Devo when this came out, but this is his first film score. They got him early. Because we all know how metal Devo is. So let's do Metal Ween right. This is Slaughterhouse Rock. We open in a dark, dank dungeon with a creature headed for a boy named Alex. Ah, uh, but it was just a dream. Or was it? Yeah, it was. Or was it, as Alex's friends read a news story about a band named Body Bag who were brutally murdered on Alcatraz Island, with the lead singer being found in a similar condition to Alex in his dream the night before. H who are these guys just following them around? I thought they were about to do something, but then the scene just ends. Alex gets introduced to a girl named Jan, and they agree to go get food, but not before an unnecessarily long pan-through of the restaurant they're at. Gotta hit that hour 25 mark somehow. Seriously, it is a minute and a half from the time we enter the restaurant to the time we actually see the main characters. Alex begins hearing what everyone in the restaurant is saying, and the wall pulls a Freddy Krueger. For you see, Alex is haunted by nightmares. But it's an 80s horror movie, so all his friends are only focused on getting laid. The dreams become even more real, as his dream of being surrounded by fire manifests as real fire. Something they just kinda blow past so they can exposition dump on us with his... Psychokinesis teacher? I only took your class because I figured it'd be an easy A. Introduction of Psychokinesis. He must go to Greendale. Something something evil ritual on Alcatraz that ended in fire. And now Miss Carolyn wants to take him to Alcatraz to face whatever's haunting him. 
Alex is hesitant, but when his latest dream causes an exorcist homage, he and his friends set out to Alcatraz in the middle of the goddamn night. I get him and the teacher going, maybe even a friend or the girl he likes, but all these guys and their girlfriends going feels like padding for the body count. Which I am a-okay with. Especially after you hear some of their jokes. Shouldn't we at least brought some silver bullets or garlic or something? Stop it, now I'm hungry too. And they get into Alcatraz pretty damn easily. Do you guys know this movie is banned in Germany? Like it got banned sometime in the 90s, and from what I can tell, they've never unbanned it. It's still banned in Germany. I know that has nothing to do with anything, but uh, I really wanted to highlight this film from Metal Ween, but I ended up not really having that much to say about it, so... I'm kind of stalling for time. Do you guys know Patricia Arquette was at the premiere of this film? But Alex gets separated from the group Daphne style, which is odd because he's the only one that is definitely not dying yet. But whoever this guy is sure is. This is just a random body the gang find, but that's enough sightseeing for them. Unfortunately for Richard, that's uh, this guy, he doesn't quite make it as he's sucked into the light. And at long last, Rockula's mom shows up to tell Alex what's going on. Apparently she's the lead singer of Body Bags, who's unleashed a demon that has since been trapping souls in Alcatraz to increase its power. And uh-oh, the demon has now possessed Richard. Okay. Impress me. Uh, how did he do that? There's no implication that the ghost is doing it or anything, he's just slowly lowered to the ground of his own accord. And it's time for the big rock number that's all footage we've already seen, and the music... Well, it feels like it was performed by Devo, because it was, and that really doesn't fit the tone here. There's a lot of heavy exposition here, but they kindly break it up by introducing the ghosts of Tony Basil's bandmates, who have fun designs and deliver some of the funniest lines in the film. What happened, you guys? Got my soul shame. Unfortunately, they're only here for like a minute, and that's the last we see of them. Kind of feels pointless to even introduce them. Demon Rich is finally getting some work done, only an hour into the movie. And Tony Basil's a shoe in for gender-swapped Beetlejuice. And at least one of his friends just died off-screen. What was the point of even bringing them? Especially when the on-screen deaths look like this. Fuck, that's awesome! But he's coming in for his big final act. The girl Alex kinda liked, I guess. I mean, they went to lunch that one time. So Alex has to save them by traversing the dark, dank dungeon. Although, they seem to be doing alright for themselves. You know, until they start a fire that traps one of them inside. But Alex frees the trapped souls by... opening this door. Okay, sure. That of course kills the demon, which means Miss Basil must be on her way. But she leaves Alex her ability to play piano, I think? They're not very clear. And over the end credits, we get the hard rockin' supergroup of Devo and the lady that sang Mickey. And that's Slaughterhouse Rock. It's a mixed bag, but what's good is really good. I think the plot structure is a big problem. They spend way too long on really boring stuff and just sort of skip over some of the film's most interesting aspects. Plus, it's pretty evident where corners have been cut. Still, there's a lot of fun moments in this movie. Tony Basil steals the show, and the effects and costumes are really neat. Overall, it's exactly the type of cheesy fun I want from a Metal Ween movie. I could not be happier with this pick. So I did good for my first Metal Ween? Yes you did, Mr. Senior Executive. Yeah. Naturally, I think you should check out my Rockula review, that movie's a load of fun. And, uh, until next time, have a very happy Metal Ween!
Are you afraid someone's going to steal your cobwebs? For your information, little lady, these are very valuable family heirlooms. We are directly descended from the first slobs who came over on the Mayflower. You think you might review another one this year? Nah, I got errors I need to rectify. Metalween's not over, but we're doing something different next time.